the Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to Lesson 76 on your distance education program in chemistry for lower seat science. I am Longning Kigo Innocent and I'm your chemistry teacher. Now, we are still on the topic energy applications and uses and we are treating the subtopic energetics. This subtopic energetics will be treated in the following lessons. We have introduction to energetics, we have enthalpy changes, experimental determination of heat of combustion of a fuel, experimental determination of heat of neutralization, Hayes' law and its applications, part one, two, and three. Then we have uses of standard entropy changes of formation. We have born energy and born energy term, born energy term and entropy of reactions, born energy term, structure and bonding, we have standard enthalpies involved in the formation of ionic crystals. We have bone harbor cycle. We have energy considerations and stoichiometry of ionic compounds. We have enthalpy changes involved when ionic compounds dissolve. And we have energy sources. Now, before beginning today's lesson proper, I would like us to correct the assignment we had at the end of our previous lesson. Correction of assignment. Now, assuming that kerosene has a molecular formula C11H24. Calculate the standard enthalpy change when one mole of kerosene burns completely in oxygen using the data below. So working with one mole of chlorine, one mole burns completely. We're using the data given on the table. Now on this table, we have standard enthalpy of formation of the kerosene, carbon dioxide, and water. So this is the data given. So we're going to use this data to get the, uh, to get uh, the enthalpy change when one mole of kerosene burns completely in oxygen. Now to proceed, now we first of all write the balance equation of the reaction. And this reaction is the reaction of combustion of chlorine. The one mole of chlorine is burnt with oxygen to give water and carbon dioxide. Now we ensure that the equation is balanced. So this equation on the screen is perfectly balanced. Then we proceed now by getting the, the by forming all the reactants in the equation now why do we form the reactants the data is the end in the data we have enthalpies of formation of all the species so we are going to form the reactants we are going to form the products we link them up in a cycle that is this reaction with um, we link them up in a cycle Now we link all of them in, up in a cycle, that is this equation, with the elements in their normal physical state forming the reactants and both the products. So we start to form one mole of kerosene, we have 12 moles of carbon reacting with 12 moles of hydrogen gas to give one mole of kerosene. We have, uh, we don't, we will not need to form oxygen because it is in its normal physical state. And the entropy of formation of an element in its normal physical state is zero, so there's no need to write that equation. Then we move now to formation of the products. Now we need to form carbon dioxide and water from the element in their normal physical state by using the same amount as in the balanced equation. So we have 11 moles of carbon reacting with 11 moles of oxygen to give us 11 moles of carbon dioxide as in the equation. We have 12 moles of hydrogen gas reacting with 6 moles of oxygen gas to give us 12 moles of water in the liquid state as in the equation. So now we go now, we link up the element in the normal physical state 
we form a cycle linking them to the reactants and in the product. Now, if the, uh, the amount we use at exactly the same amount in the balance equations, the same elements will be needed to form the products and the reactants. So we link them up in a cycle. What I want you to note is that here we have 11 times the entropy of formation of carbon dioxide. Why? Because entropy of formation is when one mole is formed. So we have 11 moles of a compound form. We have 11 times the entropy of formation. Same for water. There are 12 moles of water form. So we have 12 times the entropy of formation of water. And then uh, there's 17 moles of oxygen form. So we have 17 times the entropy of formation of oxygen. But take note, since oxygen here is in its normal physical state, this entropy will be zero. So if you apply Hayes' law now, linking the entropy changes in the clockwise direction and equating, uh, adding the entropy changes in the clockwise direction and equating to the sum of the entropy changes in the anti-clockwise direction, we are going to have, uh, that is application of Hayes' law, we are going to have the equation that you see below. So we have, based on Hayes' law, we have uh, entropy of formation of kerosene, that is one mole, plus entropy of reaction, as you see, be equal to 11 times entropy of formation of carbon dioxide, plus 12 times entropy of formation of water. So if we simplify, making the entropy of, for, of reaction the subject, that is that reaction is a combustion reaction, if we make it the subject of the equation, we have 11 times entropy of formation of carbon dioxide, plus 12 times entropy of formation of water, minus entropy of formation of the kerosene. When we substitute the variables with their values and we simplify, we are going to have entropy of reaction, that is a combustion reaction, is equal to negative 6,064 kilojoules per mole. So this is the entropy of that reaction given. And that, that's how we can get them indirectly by applying Hayes' law. <laughs> So today's lesson, lesson 76, is titled Born, Ener Born Energy and Born Energy Term. Now, the lesson outline is as follows. We have the objectives, the prerequisite, Born Energy and Born Energy Term, that is a lesson proper. Then we have evaluation, we have assignment. So, as the objective, so by the end of this lesson, you must be able to understand and define Born Energy and Born Energy Term. And should also be able to calculate born energy from available data. Prerequisite, in order to effectively understand this lesson, you must have mastered the lessons on entropy changes and the application of Hayes' law, part one. So let's begin with entropy changes and born energies. What is entropy changes? What can we get from entropy changes and born energy? So now, to understand carefully, we need to begin from how reactions take place. What happens when chemical reactions take place? Now, when chemical reactions occur, bonds must be broken in the reactant molecules so that new bonds will be able to be formed in the product. So for every chemical reaction to take place between reactants, bonds must be broken in the reactant molecules to enable new bonds to be formed in the product. That's what, that is what we need to know seriously and recall we saw in the previous lessons that bond breaking is endothermic while bond formation is exothermic so i want you to consider the example of the reaction between hydrogen and chlorine molecule to form hydrogen chloride as you have in the reaction on your screen so for this reaction to proceed correctly now bonds in hydrogen and chlorine molecules must break to form hydrogen atoms and chlorine atoms now, when these atoms are formed, that is hydrogen atoms and chlorine atoms are formed, they will then react between themselves to form new bonds that are found in the hydrogen chloride molecules. So the first thing is bonds will be broken in hydrogen, bonds will be broken in chlorine to form atoms, then the atoms will react to form hydrogen chloride and new bonds will be formed, will be found in them. Now to understand it, well, I want you to consider this energy level diagram as you have on your screen. We have, this is hydrogen, a diatomic molecule. This is chlorine, a diatomic molecule. Now in hydrogen molecule, we have a single bond between two hydrogen atoms. And in chlorine molecule, we also have a single bond between two chlorine atoms in the diatomic molecules. So now, these bonds have to be broken. So we have one mole of uh, hydrogen to hydrogen bond. 
And one mole of fluorine to fluorine bond must be broken because this is one mole of hydrogen molecule, one mole of fluorine molecule. Now, when these bonds are broken, we have two moles of hydrogen atoms produced. When one mole of hydrogen, uh, when one mole of, uh, when the bond in one mole of hydrogen molecules is broken, we have two moles of hydrogen atom gas, and we also have two moles of chlorine atoms gas. You see them separate now. There's no bond linking them to form the molecules. Now, when these atoms are formed, they react. See, this process is endothermic. Energy is needed to break the bond, confirming that bond breaking is endothermic. Now, these atoms now will react to form new bonds. Now see here, hydrogen was bonded to hydrogen, here chlorine was bonded to chlorine. Now in hydrogen chloride, hydrogen is instead bonded to chlorine, a new bond has been formed. And this bond formation is exothermic. Energy is given up, indicated by the arrow pointing downward, is exothermic. Now we have two moles of hydrogen chloride molecules now formed. Now you see here, hydrogen is bonded to chlorine, and hydrogen is also bonded to chlorine, so new bonds have actually been formed. Now, to complete the cycle, we have the enthalpy change of the reaction, that is, the formation of hydrogen chloride from uh, hydrogen and chlorine. So, this is it pointing downward. Overall, it's an exothermic reaction. So, this is to explain what happens when reactions take place. Now, so, in the course of a chemical reaction, there's a definite quantity of energy that is either absorbed or given out. Now, this energy is called the bond energy or bond dissociation energy, that is, involved when bonds are broken or when bonds are formed. Now, this energy is associated with each kind of bond type in a molecule. So, in the course of a chemical reaction, energy may be absorbed or given out, absorbed to break bonds and given out when bonds are formed. Now, this energy is called the bond energy or bond dissociation energy and is attributed to each kind of bond type. So, each bond has a particular amount of energy attributed to that bond type. So, this bond energy is taken in as we've seen when a bond is broken and is given out when a bond is formed. Taken in because bond breaking is endothermic and given out because bond formation is exothermic. And we move now to see what the bond energy is. What is this type of energy we call bond energy? Now, bond energy is the energy required to break one mole, take note, one mole of a chemical bond, we can call it AB, in a specific compound in the gaseous state and under standard conditions. Take note, so this is the energy required to break one mole of a chemical bond in a specific compound in the gaseous state and under standard conditions. This must be taken note of. So we move now. You see, this bond energy can be symbolized by E, capital E, O, G, E, symbolizing energy, G, stand, uh, which stands for dissociation. For example, the, uh, the bond energy of the hydrogen to hydrogen bond can be represented by E, you have in bracket hydrogen to hydrogen, or the bond energy, or you have D, hydrogen to hydrogen. So these are ways we can symbolize bond energies of various bonds. Now we have seen uh, that that is how we symbolize bond energy. We want to take note that the unit of bond energy is a kilojoules per mole. Kilojoules per mole. Now let's go to for, uh, consider these examples. We have the energy, the bond energy of the hydrogen chlorine bond can be written as we have E in bracket hydrogen to chlorine, and that is the value plus 431 kilojoules per mole. Or we can use D in bracket HCl, and the energy is plus 431 kilojoules per mole, possibly because it's an endothermic process. Now it's important to note that the bond energy of one particular kind of bond varies slightly in different compounds depending on the type of atoms attached to any of the atoms involved in the bond. Take note, the bond energy of one particular kind of bond varies slightly in different compounds depending on the type of atoms attached to any of the atoms involved in the bond. Now, what do I mean? Consider this example. Now, the carbon-hydrogen bond energies is different in these four species given to you on the screen. Now, the bond, is, the, the bond energy belongs to carbon-hydrogen bond. And the atoms involved in the bond are the same, carbon and hydrogen. But in these four different species, the energy of that bond varies. That is, you have CH4, CH3, CH2, and CH. In CH4, that is methane, the bond energy of one carbon to hydrogen bond is plus 431 kilojoules per mole. When you move to CH3, the bond energy of a carbon to hydrogen bond is plus 364 kilojoules per mole. So it is changing. 
because the number of atoms attached to these uh, uh, the, the atoms involved in the bond are changing too. So in CH2, the bond energy is also different. It's plus 523 kilojoules per mole. And in CH, the bond energy is plus 339 kilojoules per mole. So you see clearly that the bond energy of a bond can vary be, uh, depending on the environment of that bond. That is the type of atoms bonded to any of the carbon atoms involved in that bond. So let's go to bond energy term. We have seen bond energy. What is bond energy term? Now, bond energy term is the average bond energy per mole of a particular kind of covalent bond in a molecule. I repeat, bond energy term is the average energy per mole of a particular kind of covalent bond in a molecule. Now, bond energy term, unlike bond energy, is symbolized. We have E and there's a bar on top of it indicating average, the mean. Now, for example, the bond energy term of the hydrogen-hydrogen bond is represented as you have E bar, hydrogen to hydrogen, and OD, hydrogen to hydrogen, as you see on your screen. So, and the unit of bond energy term is the same as that of bond energy. It is a kilojoules per mole. Now, to understand what we mean by bond energy term, I want you to consider uh, this example with methane, with the molecular formula CH4. Now, you see that in methane, we have four carbon to hydrogen bonds. So we've represented, we have differentiated the hydrogen atoms. We have H, we have H prime, H prime prime, and H prime prime prime. Those are the different bonds involved. So we want to see the energies involved in these bonds, and then we get the average, that is the bond energy term of carbon hydrogen bond in methane. So we start now to break the C, let's say the CH bond. This is the energy we need, plus 431 kilojoules per mole. That's the energy needed to break CH bond. Now, when we go to, to break CH prime bond, in this case, we have now plus 364 kilojoules per mole. This is the bond we are breaking now. The second bond we are breaking, we broke this one at the first. This is the one we are breaking now. So when we go to C prime now, we are breaking this bond. The third one, we have the energy of plus 523 kilojoules per mole. And we break the C prime CH prime 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 bond, we have a plus 339 kilojoules per moles of energy needed. So see, all those bonds have different energies. Now, how do I get the bond energy term from these different energy values? We simply get the average of all those bond energies. So we sum the bond energies of the four different bonds and we divide by four to get the bond energy term. So you see, it is the energy, the bond energy of the CH bond plus the bond energy of the CH prime bond plus the bond energy of the CH prime prime bond plus the bond energy of the CH prime 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 bond all divided by 4. When we substitute uh, the variables with their values, we have these and we simplify, we have the value of plus 414.3 kilojoules per mole. So this value now is the bond energy term of the carbon hydrogen bond in methane. Now we move now to this table where we have some bonds and their bond energy term values. So the bond energy term value of the carbon hydrogen bond generally is 410 kilojoules per mole. For carbon to carbon single bond is 350 kilojoules per mole. For carbon to carbon double bond is 610 kilojoules per mole. Carbon to chlorine bond we have 340 kilojoules per mole. Carbon fluorine single bond we have 495 kilojoules per mole. Hydrogen to fluorine single bond, we have 562. And carbon to oxygen double bond, we have 740 kilojoules per mole. So we now go to calculating bond energy. Now there are two ways we can calculate bond energy. We can calculate bond energy from the entropy of atomization. And we can also get bond energy from entropy of formation. Now to calculate bond energy from entropy of atomization, we are based on the fact that Atomization of the gaseous molecules involves the breaking of all the bonds in that molecule. I repeat, if a gaseous molecule is to be atomized, that is producing gaseous atoms, all the bonds between atoms in the molecule must be broken. And so the entropy of atomization now will be equal to the sum of the various bond energies of bonds in that molecule. So let's begin with this example and see how we do that. Now calculate the bond energy term of the carbon to carbon single bond and the bond energy term of the carbon to hydrogen single bone given the following entropy changes. 
we have uh, atomization of butane that's the energy and we also have atomization of pentane and the energy is given so how can we use this to get the bond energy ter the value of the bond energy term of carbon to carbon bond and the value of the bond energy term of carbon to hydrogen single bond now we get to the solution the first thing we do is we struggle to get the structure of each of those species now this is the structure of butane now in butane we have one two three carbon to carbon bonds single bonds and we have up to one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten carbon to hydrogen bonds so which means that to atomize butane we need to break three carbon to carbon single bonds and ten carbon to hydrogen single bonds so now if we break we simply have ten bond energy term of carbon to carbon carbon to hydrogen bonds plus three bond energy term of carbon to carbon single bonds will be equal to the entropy change of the atomization of butane as you see and we call this one reaction equation one now we go to pentane we have the structure of pentane molecule notice that there are four carbon to carbon single bonds and 12 carbon to hydrogen single bonds so to atomize pentane we need to break all those bonds so which makes us see that uh, 12 bond energy term of the carbon to hydrogen single bond plus 4 bond energy term of carbon to carbon single bond will be equal to the entropy of atomization of pentane. So we call this one equation 2 now. So these are the two equations we have derived. Now we simply solve the two equations because they are linear equations, we solve them by the elimination method. So what do we do now? We multiply equation 1 by 4 to obtain equation 3 and we multiply equation 2 by 3 to obtain equation 4. The aim is to balance the, 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 the bond energy term of the carbon to carbon single bond so that it can be eliminated by subtraction. So if we do that, we have equation 3, we have 40 bond energy term of carbon to hydrogen and 12 bond energy term of carbon to carbon and that is the energy equation 3. In the second equation, we have a similarity, 12 bond energy term of carbon to carbon single bond. So since the carbon, uh, we have 12 bond energy term of carbon to carbon in the first equation and 12 bond energy term of carbon to carbon in the second equation we can subtract to eliminate it and be left with bond energy term of carbon to hydrogen bond so if we take equation 4 minus equation 3 we have we have the equation i have on your screen 4 bond energy term of carbon to hydrogen single bond will be equal to uh, 1643 that is this minus this will give us this value if we divide all through by 4 now we we'll have the bond energy term of the carbon to hydrogen single bond to be plus 412.3 kilojoules per mole. Now we'll substitute this in equation one or equation two initially and simplify to get the bond energy term of the carbon to carbon single bond now. So this is the bond energy term of carbon to hydrogen single bond. If we substitute this in equation one, this is equation one, we are going to have this other equation where we have 10 times this energy plus three times bond energy term of carbon to carbon single bond is the energy given to you if we simplify correctly, we have bond energy term of the carbon to carbon single bond to be plus 347.3 kilojoules per mole. So this is how we can get the bond energy term from entropies of atomization. Now we can also calculate the bond energy from entropies of formation. Now how do we get bond en energy from entropies of formation? The first thing to do is, this one is based on Hayes' law. We are writing the formation of the products from their constituent elements in the normal physical state. Now, we determine the atomization of the elements and atomization of the products. As you see, then we link up the equations in a cycle. As you have on your screen, we have the elements that is a formation of the product. We uh, atomize the elements and obtain gaseous atoms. We atomize the product and we obtain gaseous atoms. And that is a cycle. Then we apply this law. We take the sum of the entropy changes in the clockwise equal to the sum of the entropy changes in the anti-clockwise direction. And we are going to have uh, the entropy of formation will be equal to delta H2 equal to the summation of the bond energy terms in those elements. And we can make now the bond energy terms a subject and we get whatever uh, bond energy term we are looking for. So we continue with equation two. Calculate the bond energy term of the carbon to carbon single bond in 18, assuming these various uh, uh, energies given, the bond energy of carbon to hydrogen single bond, entropy of formation of 18, entropy of atomization of carbon, entropy of atomization of hydrogen, they have been given. So we are going to use them to get the bond energy term of the carbon to carbon single bond. So we first write the equation of the formation of 18 from its element in the normal physical state. 
Then we struggle now to atomize each of the species, the elements and uh, the product. We atomize carbon and we atomize hydrogen. We also atomize the product ethane to have the elements in their normal, uh, to have gaseous atoms. Now take note that to atomize ethane molecule, we need to break one carbon to carbon single bond and six carbon to hydrogen single bond. So the entropy of atomization of ethane is the same as the energy uh, bond energy of the carbon to carbon single bond plus six times the bond energy of the carbon to hydrogen single bond. So this is how we we'll proceed. Now we link them up in a cycle. So here we're supposed to have the entropy of atomization of 18. We'll replace it with the energy, this sum of the bond energy terms as we have seen. And then we apply Hayes' law. As you know, we take the sum of the arrows in the clockwise equate to the sum of the uh, entropy changes in the anti-clockwise direction. And you see we are multiplying this one by six because we have six moles of hydrogen atoms form and multiply this one by two because we have two moles of carbon atoms form of one atomization so we apply this law we have this uh, equation from Hayes' law we can now make uh, the entropy change we are looking for the bond energy of the carbon to carbon single bond the subject of the equation we substitute the variables with their values and we simplify we have plus 329.6 kilojoules per mole as the bond energy term of the carbon to carbon single bond so you need to remember that bond energy is the energy required to break one mole of a chemical bond in a specific compound in the gaseous state and under standard conditions. Bond energy term now is the average bond energy per mole of a given covalent bond in a molecule. And the bond energy of one particular kind of bond varies slightly in molecules depending on the type of atoms attached to any of the atoms involved in the bond. Now, to know how well you have followed this lesson, I would like you to answer this question. Now, question one, what is bond energy term? Define bond energy term. And question two, calculate the bond energy term of the oxygen to hydrogen single bond in water from the data given to you. So how can I use this data to get the bond energy of the oxygen the bond energy term of the oxygen to hydrogen bond as required by the question. So now this, uh, this is the energy, the bond energy of carbon, of oxygen hydrogen bond, one oxygen hydrogen bond in water, and this is the uh, bond energy term of another oxygen to the second oxygen to hydrogen bond in water given. How can I use them to get the bond energy term of the oxygen hydrogen bond in water? So solution, let's begin with the first one. What is bond energy term? Now, bond energy term is the average bond energy per mole of a particular covalent bond in a molecule. Now, question two, calculate the bond energy term of oxygen to hydrogen single bond in water from the data below. So we start by, you know that bond energy term is simply the average of the different bond energies of the different bonds in that molecule. That's we, we, we take the average of the bond energy of the first oxygen hydrogen bond plus the bond energy of the second oxygen hydrogen bond and we divide by two to get the average. And this average is what is known as the bond energy term. So bond energy term is delta H1 for the first reaction plus delta H2 for the second reaction all divided by two. So if we substitute this with their values, we have bond energy term of the oxygen hydrogen bond is equal to 498 plus 428 divided by two. And, it, and if we add them, we have plus 400. So this is a bond energy term of oxygen to hydrogen bond in water. It's plus 463 kilojoules per mole. So that's the bond energy term of the oxygen hydrogen bond in water. And that's how you could get them, the average of the different bond energy values. So before our next lesson, we'd like you to answer this question. Write equations to show that the bond energy of hydrogen to hydrogen single bond is the same as two times the entropy of atomization of hydrogen. References, we have chemistry for IB diploma by Steve Owen. We have advanced chemistry by Michael Cluxton and Rosalind Fleming. And we have chemistry in context by Graham Hill and John Holman. We have complete advanced level chemistry by Ngule Emmanuel Eno. So we've come to the end of this lesson. Our next lesson will be on bond energy term and entropy of reaction. See you in the next lesson.
Una tege ma jang ma tege ndom ma ne tambia niña ne injubia yen ngani bana ma tege mot ngani la kiri wa tege ndong esa kina bia dinki do ma ne tambia niña ne injubia yen tam tama mote tam zabike tam tama tonge tam zabike tam tam tama mote tam zabike ma ne tambia niña ne injubia yen